<laughs> Our next guest is one of my favorite people, generous with his time always, three-time Pro Bowl, wide receiver, yada, 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 ranks first on the Cincinnati Bengals all-time career receptions list. He has won an Emmy 17 times, pales in comparison to my baby one, and he's currently in his 14th season in the Sunday Night Football booth on NBC. Chris Collinsworth, welcome, 17 Emmys, what? <laughs> Jay, how are you, my friend? How are you? I'm so good. Thank you for joining me. How are you? I'm good. I'm a little. I'm a little worried though that uh, since you haven't been to Cincinnati this year, my boys are falling apart just a bit, and you are sort of the uh, the princess of the Queen City. So, yes. can we get a return visit, maybe, to get the spark going? Okay. Because really, you ignited the flame last year. You know, you really did. I really did. Maybe it needs to be like a you and me situation, where we both go and take care of business. And let's start there in Cincinnati, not only home to the print of the princess of Queen City, but your home, of course, and the home of PFF, which we love. And they've got all those stats, and they're not kind to one Joe Burrow, who has been sacked a million times already uh, this season. And by a million, I mean. 13. He's on pace for an outrageous 111 sacks this year. How do they fix it? I don't know, but they, you know, they've been behind in both games. And, and let's start with they played two really good defenses, right? Uh, they played the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, got behind in that game, had to drop back and throw it, and Joe was getting killed. They got behind against the Dallas Cowboys, uh, and and had to drop back, had to throw it, and you know he's going to take. Uh, a beating from that defense as well. So they, they clearly have, you know, some issues up front. They, it's a carryover from last year. You would have thought, you know, they tried to do some things, bringing in Lyle Collins, bringing in Alex yeah. Kappa. They got the rookie Bolson over there, Ted Karras. So everybody thought it was going to be better. Uh, but it, to some extent, too, I think that Joe Burrow has to take a little bit of it and just go, I'm not going to make my guys look bad anymore. Okay. You know, I'm going to get this ball out of here. Tom Brady, you know, is under 25 sacks every year for a reason because Tom Brady knows how to get rid of the football. So at this level of football and with the significance of, of what Joe Burrow is, you know, he's just, he's the franchise. He's everything to, to the Cincinnati Bengals. A, he has to stay healthy. So he's got to take fewer hits. And I think he has to take a little bit of responsibility to get that sucker out of there every once in a while. I literally have a question. Is there any responsibility of this on Burrow? And you just answered it before I even asked you. My only that's, other question. That's sort of that mind melt thing that we a, got going that's on. That's that Cincinnati I mean? thing. Chris, but also, I mean, are they going to regret not just getting to Ron Armstead? If you look at, you know, obviously had a high price tag, but maybe I, I, I hope the O-line gels and works out. I really do. Yeah, I don't you know, they, they, Jonah Williams was a high draft pick. So I think they felt like that they they had it covered this year. And it, it just hasn't worked out that way so far. But one thing we know about the NFL, uh, whether you're broadcasting or playing, it's a long year, right? Yeah. And, and the things that we thought about in the beginning of last year and what we thought at the end of last year were two entirely different things. I mean, they just are. And, and you look at even at the playoffs, you know, does it even matter if you're the number one seed and get the buy or not? Because the two first round, you know, the two top seeds last year got knocked out at home in the opening weekend. And we had a four seed playing a four seed and it probably should have been a four seed playing a six seed in San Francisco, but for the dropped interception right at the end of that game and the championship game. Right. So uh, it, it's a long road. I think the Bengals offensive line will get better. I just hope that Joe survives the year. So agree that the backup situation bleak uh, in Cincinnati, but I'll get out there. I'll fix. I'll ju just try. I'll fix it. I'll, there's your analysis. Just, you just and Rico wave, talk about just it. Just give them the little tip <laughs> of the tiara, and you know <laughs> it'll all go away. Just like you did last time. It I was will. Um, you came to town one time, <laughs> one time. Jack Collinsworth showed you a couple of yeah. fancy places yeah. to go to. You know the Chili Parlor and the Grater's Ice Cream, Grater's. and all of a sudden. You tip the tiara, and that was it. We that's, were on a roll. That's the solution. That's the what's missing. You're so right. Here, I want to ask you about Trey Lance, because he's done for the year some big NFL storylines with the great Chris Collinsworth. Jimmy G comes in. He guides them to win over the Seahawks. I checked PFF, as I always do, and I saw that he earned a barely above average overall PFF grade for his performance. Are the Niners actually better with Jimmy G under center? You have to remember that Jimmy didn't even get a playbook. You know, which is bizarre mm. until like three weeks ago because they all just thought he was going to be traded. So they didn't want to show him the whole playbook. 
And so he had to sort of work out on his own on the side. And I think somewhere in the back of all of our minds, we were wondering, you know, what is best for the 49ers? And we just didn't get a, to see enough of Trey Lance to know if he was the right answer. But we know that Garoppolo is good enough at least to take them to the championship game and the Super Bowl once, despite the fact they got beaten and it wasn't for one missed pass on a long ball and that one, they might have won the Super Bowl uh, as well. So I, I think that immediately there'll be an air of confidence about this 49ers team. But remember, he's still coming off that shoulder injury. He mm -hmm. didn't get a whole lot of training camp either. So I think there'll be a bit of a learning curve here. That's a young offensive line. They're still going to get better uh, as they go uh, along here as well. Uh, but it was, there was a little, I don't know. It just didn't feel quite right yet with the San Francisco 49ers with Trey Lance. And all of a sudden Garoppolo came in there and it just seems like they've just sort of fallen back into old habits. And now they'll rely on the run game defense and, I think they're going to be right in the mix. Yeah, and now this week you've got Denver, of course, a mess with penalties and decisions and all of that. How do you use PFF to get you set for that game? No, we use it all. I mean, we use the grades, we use the snap counts, we use the tendencies. We have my guys from PFF will come in and they'll study the game from the week before and they'll give me a little breakdown, which is what we did, uh, did all day yesterday. Denver is an interesting team. I just got finished – watching the defensive tape and uh, they come up there with that five man line and and really try to get some pressure uh, with Randy Gregory on the outside who came up with the big play uh, and Chubb and all the different guys that they have out there. So it, it's a it's an interesting team. I don't know how badly hurt Patrick Sertan is and mm -hmm. you know what that's going to mean for this week's game. Uh, but they have to get it going on offense. I, I mean, it was startling to watch the number of mistakes that they made. And it, it's easy to put everything on coach and quarterback and, uh, and just kind of go, oh, Nathaniel Hackett, he doesn't know what he's doing. And Russell Wilson is a bad deal. Russell Wilson played fine. He was putting the ball where he needed to put it. Nathaniel Hackett's play calls were fine. They were dropping passes. They were jumping off sides. They were holding. Every time they yeah. started to get something going, they went in reverse, and then they got down to the red zone. And for the second straight game, they haven't done anything down there. So uh, they've had six trips to the red zone. They haven't scored a touchdown yet. So that's that's the way you, you get beat in this league. So this week, they spend more time in the red zone. I'll spend a little time at Top Golf in Denver getting ready for the game, and uh, <laughs> we'll be good. And, of course, <laughs> hanging out on PFF and getting set for all of that. Uh, I got to ask you while we have you, and, and I want to get to the PFF app and then have a little fun with you. At the end of, We're at the end of our show now. But uh, I, I got to ask you, indulge me and millions of NFL fans, what happened to the slide? Hi, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so – here, here's here's the basics of what happened, all right? So when Al Michaels was my partner, yeah. Al Michaels did an opening monologue, right? He came on by himself, yes. and that's that's what Al has done for the last 20 years. So I'm like, I'm not changing that. You, you just you just do that, right? You just do your <laughs> opening monologue, and then I'll, I'll you know. So they tell me to sit. <laughs> Look at this thing. So they tell me to sit on the, uh, on the desk. They tell me to sit on the desk, and they put a piece of tape, believe it or not, Kay, between my legs. And they put it on the desk, and they say, all right, straddle that piece of tape right there, okay? So I straddle that piece of tape, and I sit in there just like I'm going to be talking now. And so then the cameraman comes over there, and he looks at And so Al's going to do his opening monologue, so they shoot just a solo shot of him. And he goes, Chris, get your ass out of the frame. What are you doing? Get out of the way. So I go, well, you told me to sit on a piece of tape. What do you mean get out of the way? So I'm like, I go, okay. So he goes, just lean out of the picture. Your shoulder's in the picture. So I go, okay. So I just lean like that to get out of the picture. And so then Al comes on and he does it. So, you know, welcome to, you know, we're Lambeau Field today, Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, da, 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 da. And let's welcome in my partner, Chris Collinsworth. So then I go, I go, so then I just slide in. So then I still have my legs between the piece of tape. And, and so that's how the whole thing got started. And somebody made like a meme out of it or did something. I don't know. And then it started to become a thing. But my Tariko doesn't do the opening monologue. So what am I going to do? It's like I'm sitting there. I could lean out and then 
but he's be like stupid. <laughs> I was like, so what do you do? I don't, do you do it just for effect? Do you do it for, I don't, I, I'll have to do it. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, maybe, well, I'll, maybe I'll leave that way. As soon as I get oh. finished, maybe I just go that way. Or maybe you need another entrance. I mean, we'll take thoughts at Up and Adam show. Maybe you could do like what Lady Gaga did at the Super Bowl. She came from the top. Maybe we strap a harness on you and plop like you down. That. I like that a lot. Can, can, you're good on social media. You, everybody loves you on social media. <laughs> Come up with an answer. I need an answer yeah. for this because I, I don't, I get a lot of like stuff. People send me a lot of stuff. Well, they want me to do it, but I, like, like I don't know how to make it make sense anymore. But you're acting like it's not like you, like it was going to go away and nobody was going to say anything. Like the world is up in arms. We need our Collinsworth lies. Like, come on. You knew that. I, I I guess so. So <laughs> okay. I'll just, just we only have just we begin only... to fade to black here as you <laughs> as you go off the air here. Well, that's how we'll go off the air, but not before you tell me about the new app that we need to know about and everything you've got going on. PFF app downloaded over twenty thousand people already have downloaded this thing. All the fantasy football, all the gambling, all the news you could ever want. You don't need to go anywhere else. Just go to pff.com and check it out. I think you'll love it. We certainly will. Thank you so much, Chris Collinsworth, for joining. Okay, let's do it. Let's totally flayed. Let's do. Let's, let's practice. Oh, bye, Chris. That's perfect. Bye, Jay. We'll, <laughs> you're the best. Thank you so much for joining us. As we wrap things up, uh, we can say bye to Chris. There. He's is he the best? He is the best. I had so much more I wanted to ask him, of course, about Jalen Hurts and his performance, about Aaron Rodgers. You know, he said, yeah, they need to run the ball more. And I wanted to ask him whether or not Aaron Rodgers has that in him to not just take off and throw the ball over the field if he uh, feels like it. Okay, that was our show. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Incredible. Of a guest. Big thanks to Lane Johnson, Mark Ingram, and of course the great Chris Collinsworth. Yeah, it doesn't really work. Maybe we could do like a. I think the Lady Gaga thing's good.